a rainy night like this forces your attention inside. You send your mind out and you run into the rain and the cold. So bring it back in. Try to inhabit your body fully. Think of your awareness as having a shape like the body, and it fills every part of your physical body. You're aware in your toes, you're aware in your legs, you're aware in your hips, torso, your head, your arms, everything. You fully inhabit this space. And how do you know this space? Well, you know it through the, the breath energy. There's the in and out breath, but then there are the more subtle energies that flow throughout the body, throughout the nerves and the blood vessels, out to every pore. And see how fully you can inhabit this space. This helps to pull us away from our concerns about things outside. Sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. Because if you can inhabit the space with a sense of well-being, you ask yourself, why go out? And the mind will come up with reasons. But you examine those reasons and you see that a lot of them don't have much real substance. They may be convincing if you glance at them. And this is how a lot of things happen in the mind. There's just kind of a glancing idea that comes in. And then it's gone and you pick up something out of it. And it seems more impressive and more convincing than it would be if you were able to look at it. Full on. So try to be full on with your body right now. You realize if there's going to be any happiness, any really solid happiness, you're going to find it in here. As the Buddha said, the problem of suffering is here. But the solution is also here. The end is here. Someone once asked him about how big the universe was. And the Buddha says, you could spend your whole life, even if you had an amazing ability to stride, great strides. You go for a hundred years, and you'd still never get to the end of the universe. You would die first. He says, but the end of the universe, in terms of the suffering of the universe, that can be found in here. You don't have to go out there. So stay in here. Get to know this space really fully. He said it's to be found in this fathom-long body. That doesn't mean it's going to be found in your liver or in your stomach. But what it does mean is that your awareness right here, the awareness that fills the body, that's where there will be an opening to something that's beyond the universe. This explains one of the ironies of the practice. We're told that the body is on fire with aging, illness, and death. And that this is where we're told to center ourselves. You would think that you could somehow get out of the body, that might be the end, but that's not. You become a, a wandering spirit. But if you stay right here where this awareness is, things will begin to open up. And this is where the fire escape is. In fact, what we're doing right now is learning about this fire escape, practicing right concentration. One of the terms for right concentration is jhana, which is related to the verb jayati, which means to be absorbed, but it also means to burn with a steady flame, like the, the flame of a, an oil lantern. So if you think the fire of your senses, the fires in the eyes and the ears and the nose and the tongue and the body, as they engage with the outside world, those are, there's a different verb for that kind of burning. It's the burning of a wood fire where the flames leap up and lick out and flicker all over the place. And as they leap around, they cast strange shadows on the wall and create all kinds of misunderstandings at the same time that they're burning, burning, burning away. Whereas if you have the light of a, an oil lantern or an oil, oil lamp, the flame is steady. When the flame is steady, you see things clearly. So try to make your mind steady right here. Find a spot in the body where it feels good, where the breath energy 
feels nourishing, calming when you need to be calmed, energizing when you need to be energized. You get a sense that the energy is as still as possible, your mind is as still as possible. And that's when you can read things clearly inside. In particular, you start reading the instructions for the fire escape. Now, some of those instructions come in what the Buddha has to say, but a lot of times the instructions are right here. All you have to do is start applying what the Buddha calls appropriate attention, for looking where there's stress, and particularly where the stress comes and goes. Then ask yourself, what am I doing at the same time that the stress comes? What am I doing at the same time that it goes? And you begin to notice there are certain actions in the mind, even as the mind is getting still. In fact, it's because the mind is getting still that you can see these subtle actions more clearly. The majority of the mind is still, but there will be a little flickering here and there. And you want to notice to what extent that's related to the stress coming and going. And if you see that they come and go at the same time, that's something you want to look into further. What is that? What did the mind do just then? What kind of perception did it have? What kind of thought did it have? What kind of intention? Where was it going? And what can you do to let it go? Let go of it. Now, there are two ways of letting go. One is letting go when, for the time being, and there's a letting go that goes deeper. Now, for that deeper one, you have to start looking more carefully at what the allure of those kinds of perceptions are. Why do you want to get engaged in those perceptions? Now, when you see the allure, then you can also start looking at the drawbacks, given that this adds to the level of stress to the mind. Is it worth going with? And you can contemplate this in a way that allows you to see that the allure is not worth it. That's when you gain the escape. So there's a map right there, right in your own mind. Of course, your directions on how to read the map come from what you've learned and what the Buddha had to say. In fact, this is a common image throughout the text, is that the Buddha is giving us escape instructions. There's a sutta where a man comes to see Ananda and asks for a door to the deathless. Where do you find the door to the deathless? And Ananda starts giving him a list, and it's the different levels of right concentration. The four jhanas, the four brahma-viharas, which are another way of getting the mind into, into jhana. Because even with them you have to practice Developing concentration with directed thought and evaluation, without directed thought and evaluation, with a sense of pleasure, with a sense of rapture, with a sense of equanimity. In other words, you take it through the jhanas. And then three of the formless attainments, infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, all of which are right here, even the formless ones. Where do you experience them? You're experiencing them right where you're experiencing the body right now. See that the breath gets really, really fine, refined. Your mind gets very still, and all the energy channels in the body get connected up. So there's less and less of a need to breathe air in from the outside. Whatever oxygen exchange is going to happen, it's going to happen to the skin. And when your mind is really still, the brain isn't using that much oxygen, and so you don't feel a need to breathe at all. It's not that you're trying to stifle the breath or stop it, but it just falls silent on its own as things get connected up. And as you can maintain that state, stay balanced there, you begin to notice that your sense of the edge of the body, where the body ends and outside space begins, begins to dissolve. And you realize that what's holding your idea that this is a body in here, this is just a perception you're holding on to. If you can drop that perception of the form, and stay right, th right here, you don't go anywhere else. You begin to sense the body as a mist, as a cloud of little sensation drops. 
and you see that it's easier to focus or more quiet to focus on the space between the drops. And then you sense that there is no limit to that. That's what they mean by infinite space. It's not like you, you go out and check the edge of how far it goes out to infinity, but you just don't feel any limit. So it's all right here. And this too is one of the fire escapes. Because this too you can begin to analyze in terms of what are the perceptions that come up that disturb this. What's their allure? How can you let that go? So we're finding a fire escape here in the midst of the fire. You don't have to look anywhere else. And as for all the Dharma teachings that have nothing to do with the fire escape, you can just let them go. I was given a lecture a while back by someone who was quoting an academic, saying that to say that there's a right Dharma and a wrong Dharma is a very dangerous thing. And the analogy they gave was that the Dharma is like a map. Everybody's Dharma is like a different map, and as we know, all maps distort to one extent or another, so there's no one true map. There's no one map that corresponds to all of reality. We have to accept the fact that everybody's map distorts in one way or another. But that's a false analogy. What the Buddha is giving is instructions on how to find the fire escape. And you can go anywhere in the world, any hotel in the world, and the maps, maps to the fire escapes are all the same, regardless of the culture, regardless of fancy or unfancy the hotel is. It's all the same sort of thing. They don't have to tell you how the hotel was built, or what's in the walls, or what's in the foundations. All they have to tell you is where you go to get out. And those types of information are all very standard. And there are good and bad maps to the fire escape. Some diagrams would put you in a dead-end corridor where you'd be consumed by flames or asphyxiated by the smoke. Others take you to a door, and then you open the door and it drops for 50 feet. So you want to avoid those maps. What we've got here is the map of the Eightfold Path, a map and particularly about right concentration, and it's seven supports its seven um, requisites. And then our instruction on how to use the right concentration, how to analyze what's going on in the concentration. So we can begin to understand how the mind puts suffering together and we can start taking it apart. That's the map to the fire escape. That's how you get out of the fire. So it's all right here. And there's a right way and a wrong way of trying to get out of right here. One very wrong way is saying, you're going to stay here all the time, so learn to see that the flames are beautiful while well, you're going to get engulfed. So realize, so we are in a burning building, this house of the body we have here. But the escape lies in within. It lies in learning how to separate things out. You have the body here, you've got the breath, but the, also the awareness. And for a long time in the practice of concentration, it's going to seem like they're one. But as you begin to see that your sense of the body is something you've put together out of different sensations, and you don't have to do that. That allows you to maintain the awareness right here without feeling confined by the body. So everything you need is right here. Your, the escape is right here. But to find the escape, you also have to understand what is it you're doing that keeps setting fire to the mind, and learn how to stop that. And there's a right way and a wrong way of doing that. This is why when you get instructions in the Dharma, you look at the people who are giving the instructions. When scholars say that 
There's no right or wrong dharma. You will look at, well, how are they practicing? They're just reading the books. And for them, reading the books is enough. That's a sign of something really wrong right there. It's as if they didn't have the problem of suffering, or they don't recognize they have the problem of suffering, or they don't take any interest in the idea that maybe there could be an end to this. Are these the kind of people you want to follow? You look at the Ajans. They may not have the degrees. They might not be as widely read, but they take the Buddha seriously. That suffering is a big problem, but there is a way out. That's what the Four Noble Truths are all about. It's not just four interesting statements about suffering. It's an announcement that this is the big problem in life, and here's the solution. So it's up to you how much you want to benefit from that teaching, how much you want to benefit from that announcement. But if you are looking for an escape, this is where you're going to find it.